Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, October 28th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the FBI has announced they will reopen an investigation into the Hillary Clinton email scandal. Then, more votes in multiple states are being reported to have switched from Donald Trump to Hillary Clinton. And this... <laughs> A stunning defeat of the federal government in the Oregon Bundy standoff as federal marshals have been caught physically attacking the victorious defense attorney. So I just turned to them and I said, guys, show me, show me what, what papers you have. And the next thing I know, they, were sur they surrounded me, they took a hold of me, and they were talking about how I was a resisting <laughs> a a arrest. Also, will the Democrats and their hearsay mafia be invoking violent attacks if Donald Trump wins the presidency? All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. The FBI has just sent a letter to Congress. They have discovered new emails pertaining to the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's investigation. They are reopening the case into her criminal and illegal conduct that threatens the security of the United States of America. I have now seen Director Comey's letter to Congress. We are 11 days out from perhaps the most important national election of our lifetimes. Voting is already underway in our country. So the American people deserve to get the full and complete facts immediately. The director himself has said he doesn't know whether the emails referenced in his letter are significant or not. I'm confident, whatever they are, will not change the conclusion reached in July. Therefore, it's imperative that the Bureau explain this issue in question, whatever it is, without any delay. Yes, that is the big breaking news today. The FBI is reopening the investigation into Clinton's emails. And you can see Donald Trump was just beside himself with this news. So this is just the latest October surprise for Hillary Clinton. And this comes just about 10 days away from the election. So this is really exciting. People are kind of on the edge of their seat now. So this was in a letter sent to committees and lawmakers who are relevant to the matter. FBI Director James Comey cited recent developments for the decision to look into new emails which may contain classified information and how they may relate to its previous investigation. So uh, these are recent developments and it, it's in connection with an unrelated case. So the FBI learned of the existence of emails that appear to be pertinent to the investigation. Comey says, he's, I'm writing to inform you that the investigative team briefed me on this yesterday, and I agreed that the FBI should take appropriate investigative steps designed to allow investigators to review these emails to determine whether they contain classified information, as well as anything that's important to the other investigation. So this is really exciting. Now, Hillary Clinton's campaign, of course, is saying, give us a little more information. You're making this sound as if it's just dire, terrible, of course, there's classified information. So they're immediately saying, tell us what's in the emails, but be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. And apparently <laughs> these new emails came about, the unrelated case was due to the investigation into Anthony Weiner. So now he's not just exposing himself anymore, he might be exposing the Clintons. So these new emails were found after the FBI seized uh, an electronic device that was once shared uh, between Anthony Weiner and his estranged wife, Huma Abedin. So they were investigating illicit text messages that Mr. Weiner uh, sent to a 15-year-old girl in North Carolina. And so now the Bureau tells Congress that it had uncovered new emails related to the Clinton case. One federal official said they numbered in the thousands so are these new emails that she allegedly turned them all over, but now she didn't? And now we already know that Hillary Clinton's um, staff, including Cheryl Mills and Huma Abedin, were using private uh, emails to communicate with Hillary Clinton and do other business. But now we know that Hillary's chief of staff, Cheryl Mills, used a personal email for state business. So this is Cheryl Mills, who the FBI agreed to destroy her laptops 
and give her immunity in exchange for her testimony. And like we've been saying all along, it's, it's, it's insane that she was allowed to continue on representing Clinton in this case, even though she herself was a witness and <laughs> frankly guilty of doing the same thing. So it's just, it's just crazy all around. But this is, this evidence is being revealed in the latest cache of emails released by Judicial Watch. Approximately 10% of Abedin's emails uh, released through this FOIA request were addressed to one of Mills's various personal email addresses. She had several. So several of these emails were found to contain such highly sensitive material that the State Department redacted 100% of the content pages, marking many pages with a bold stamp reading page denied. So, you know, of course, everyone, everyone's probably scrambling to try and get Hillary Clinton off because they're going to get taken down with her for doing the exact same thing. Now, here's a, another great WikiLeaks email coming out that I'm sure Hillary and her people just wish these would go away. That's why they keep trying to tell you it's all about the Russians. Well, now we have uh, some more insight into all of those celebrity endorsements or you, you see the, the Democratic National Convention where it's just like a, a celebrity extravaganza. That's because they think you're dumb. And that's why they roll out these celebrities to get these celebrity endorsements, because that's how to reach effing dumb young people. So this is marketing executive um, Wendy Braunfein, and she tells John Podesta that Clinton may not be the best face to attract younger voters and that she needs to utilize trending figures as part of an infusion to pool younger voters, because that's the crap that young people pay attention to. It's effing dumb, but being cool counts for more than Maybe it should. So basically they're saying if somebody identifies as cool and they endorse Hillary Clinton, then that means all of their other stupid little minions will follow suit. So isn't it interesting that we also know that they were saying that that's, uh, there was other emails saying that black voters also calling them dumb. It's interesting now that Hillary Clinton is throwing this huge concert with Jay-Z in Ohio to get those black voters to come. And here they're explaining why, because they think that's how dumb you are, that you won't think for yourself, you'll just do whatever Jay-Z and Beyonce tell you to do. So there you go, that's how they really feel about you. But you know what, frankly, Hillary, people are not that dumb. So after Hillary Clinton showed her support for a female draft, it's now sparking outrage. People are hijacking uh, the hashtag, and now they're, it's trending draft our daughters these are memes totally mocking hillary's war total war policies which could easily ignite world war three so they're saying yeah i'm with her on the front lines in, against uh, nuclear war with russia you know we're not going to be that stupid she thinks her and her campaign and but basically everyone here on the left thinks you're so stupid that you are going to sign up to go fight hillary clinton's nuclear wars and Remember when Obama said, rigged elections, what does that even mean? Well, we all knew that he is obviously full of it, but now there's 2006 audio emerging of Hillary Clinton actually proposing rigging the Palestine election. I have trouble making I do not think we should have pushed for an election in the Palestinian territories. I think that was a big mistake. And if we were going to push for an election, then we should have made sure that we did something to determine who was going to win. So isn't that interesting? She says, if we're going to allow them to have an election, we might as well make sure that we're going to get the outcome that we want. Seems like it was practice for this election cycle, probably who knows countless other election cycles, but that's what we're seeing now. So this is sort of the practice. They allow us to believe we're getting the opportunity to choose our new leader, our new overlord, when really they're rigging the election. And she's talking about it on this audio that had never been heard before. Uh, they, they kept it. Um, it, it had never been released. It was only heard by a few staffers that were in the room, but they just played it for the observer uh, here today with this article. So this is pretty impressive. But, you know, I'm sure she was just talking specifically about this this one country that she wanted to infiltrate and destabilize. I'm sure she's not guilty of doing that anywhere else. You know, unheard of. How dare you? And now we're getting more video. More people are outraged seeing their votes being flipped. Uh, this is an, a woman in Hollywood, Maryland. She's just the latest in a number of early voters to claim that her ballot was switched to Hillary Clinton after she tried to vote for Donald Trump. She, she said she had seen reports on the news of this happening, so she paid attention. She voted a straight Republican ticket 
and she went back, she checked, and it had switched. So it switches there on your presidential and your VP pick, even if you vote a straight Republican ticket. So she alerted an election official who told her to just go vote for a second time. So she went back the second time and made sure that they didn't change it. But that's what everyone out there needs to do because this is happening across the country. And I, I mean, how many people have already voted and maybe didn't even think to check and make sure that it hadn't been switched because you're, you're counting on this technology to do best by you, to do right by you. Uh, so the Daily Mail was actually kind of seeing if there's any credence to this whole uh, worry about vote rigging and election fraud. And they did a little snapshot survey uh, based on some convictions just in the last five years. And they have, I mean, if you scroll up, you can see the pictures there with these people. People were offering drugs for votes, like uh, cocaine. Ballots were for sale. They had corrupt poll workers. There was a magistrate and even a nun, all convicted of illegal voting, voter fraud. Uh, <laughs> so you really have to ask yourself, are you sure that this election's integrity is beyond doubt. FBI Director James Comey, in a surprising letter to Congress, laid out the vague details of the possibility of a reopening of an FBI investigation into newly discovered Clinton emails from Hillary Clinton's national security threatening personal email server debacle. The letter, addressed to a swath of congressional chairmen, read, In previous congressional testimony, I referred to the fact that the Federal Bureau of Investigation had completed its investigation of former Secretary Clinton's personal email server. Due to recent developments, I am writing to supplement my previous testimony. In connection with an unrelated case, the FBI has learned of the existence of emails that appear to be pertinent to the investigation. I am writing to inform you that the investigative team briefed me on this yesterday, and I agreed that the FBI should take appropriate investigative steps designed to allow investigators to review these emails to determine whether whether they contain classified information, as well as to assess their importance to our investigation. Although the FBI cannot yet assess whether or not this material may be significant, and I cannot predict how long it will take us to complete this additional work, I believe it is important to update your committee about our efforts in light of my previous testimony. FBI Director James Comey stated, Republican Congressman Jason Chaffetz, who led an oversight committee effort to pursue perjury charges against Hillary, immediately tweeted about the FBI's announcement. It read, FBI Director just informed me the FBI has learned of the existence of emails that appear to be pertinent to the investigation. Case reopened. The campaign trail was thrown into chaos by the news. When there's news of the FBI's investigation uh, when it just happened a little while ago they said mr trump i think they'd understand we could skip your speech in new hampshire this is so big i said i don't have the courage to skip the speech in new hampshire believe me i don't have the courage. Yeah. i think whatever is going on here sets up a first term that is going to be a really raucous one filled with more investigations, maybe impeachment proceedings. You know, you got to believe somebody's going to want to do that. Right, Robert? Well, it's actually already been articulated and signaled by House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz, a Republican of Utah. He's talking about ramping up GOP investigations in the new year should Secretary Clinton win. And we don't know if these emails uh, pertain to uh, her time while well, she was at the State Department. We just don't have any more information at this time. So, uh, okay, really, so there's, so there's, you're, this is, you're just mystified by this whole thing. <laughs> they were right? mystified, but we're... Um which is we're unaware. And Hillary, as expected, went on business as usual. When you question the very institutions of our democracy, going back to the founding of our country, you are attacking democracy. Now, we have seen Donald Trump attack so many different kinds of Americans. So we cannot just blow off what he's saying because he still is saying it he's standing up in front of large crowds and you can see how he's egging them on talking about rigged elections 
talking about how we should just cancel the election and make him president? Right, yeah. Well, we've got to be vigilant about this. This is, this is not something to be made light of because there have been too many times in world history where somebody gets elected and then that's the last election that is held. So we have to not only stand up for whoever our candidates are, we have to stand up for the process of electing them because that's how we lead ourselves. That's how we make decisions together. Hillary's campaign has been nothing short of a parade of corruption and bottomless scandals morphing into her platform as she runs for the highest office in the land. At what point do the American people become an accessory to Hillary's crimes by simply voting for her? John Bound for Infowars.com. The Federal Reserve is a private banking cartel. The yeah, Fed is a sometimes very independent uh, organization. What should be the proper relationship between the chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? The Federal Reserve is an independent agency. There is no other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. They print our money and then loan it to us at interest. The IRS is their collection agency. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. Jeff Duncan says he saw IRS special agents using semi-automatic rifles at a gun range. Now he wants answers to why the agency needs that type of firepower. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world? The central bank is in charge. Know your history and you will know your enemy. The bottom line on nuclear weapons is that when the president gives the order, it must be followed. There's about four minutes between the order being given and the people responsible for launching nuclear weapons to do so. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. They're voting for peace on planet Earth if they vote for Trump. But if they vote for Hillary, it's war. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> With her, you'll end up in World War III. I want the Iranians to know that if I'm the president, we will attack Iran. Right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. The U.S. military has just raised the threat level to DEFCON 2. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is still threatening Russia with military action following unconfirmed reports of further hacking. It's like she's not even concerned about the repercussions. Of course on, not, guys. because she's... Really loud noise. All right, looks like we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. We'll try to get Leanne back on in a few minutes. Yesterday, it was a stunning defeat for the federal government. Seven people arrested in the Oregon standoff were acquitted by a jury. And we're going to take a look at the reactions from the mainstream press, from social media, as well as from the federal marshals themselves, who attacked the defense attorney in the courtroom. Absolutely unprecedented as people who covered this uh, in the area, a guy who uh, worked for local press, said, I've been covering uh, court cases for a decade. I've never seen anything like this. So we're going to talk about all those different incidents. But first, this is what happened. As the New York Times reports it, Bundy brothers acquitted in takeover of Oregon Wildlife Refuge, but look at the first thing they say. 
armed anti-government protesters. No bias there about that, right? Well, they were armed and not in violation of any state laws. They openly carried, uh, and that's not a violation. Many people that uh, engage me on social media, I said, you know, they're, they're doing a protest and they're doing it carrying guns. It's called the First and Second Amendment. It's part of the Constitution. You should read it sometime. And you know, quite frankly, we've covered uh, several different uh, protests around here and w <laughs> protests like the ones that we did at the Alamo in favor of open carry, where we we had a thousand people openly carrying. That was very peaceful protest because the police didn't attack anybody who were openly carrying. So that's not a problem except for places like the New York Times. They say it was a surprise acquittal. Uh, and then we have reaction from Ryan Bundy's wife. He said, she said, I knew that what my husband was doing was right, but I was nervous because the judge was controlling the narrative. She said, they saw the truth. I am so grateful they saw it. And then the attorney who was attacked, uh, Marcus Mumford, said that acquitting Mr. Bundy uh, would be a victory for all Americans. That's what he told the jury. He said, they're deceiving you. And he gestured to the prosecutors. He said, it's the government that picks and chooses the rules it's going to comply with. Isn't that amazing? That's what we've seen with Hillary Clinton can do anything that she wishes. And yet what they wanted to do was to send these people to jail for a very long time. They didn't charge them with criminal trespass. And I talked to one of the defense attorneys today, Amanda Mendenhall. She was not there as the verdict was announced. She left the case after the closing arguments were made and it was turned over to the jury. So she was even out of state at the time. They called her within 30 seconds of this happening. And as she was on the phone to them, uh, they were clearing out the courtroom after the federal marshals uh, attacked uh, and then arrested uh, the winning defense attorney. But one of the things that she told me was that it, it was overreach for the federal prosecutors. It was such a gross case of overreach that that's ultimately what defeated them. And yet we see that all the time from the federal government. Here's what they charged them with. They were charged with conspiracy to impede federal employees from discharging their duties. A conspiracy, okay? Right? The federal government, whenever you reveal what they're doing or if they don't like what you're doing or, or think that you, uh, they, they want to get to you, they always charge you with conspiracy. Uh, but uh, in this particular case, conspiracy to impede federal employees. They also faced federal weapon charges, and as the New York Times says, they could have been given very long sentences. The unanimous acquittals covered all charges but one, a theft of government property charge against Ryan Bundy for removing cameras mounted at the refuge, refuge with no verdict rendered on it. I don't think he actually took those cameras. I think he took the cameras down. Uh, now, after this verdict was given, everybody uh, not guilty, Mr. Mumford approached the bench and said, I would like for my clients, uh, Ammon and Ryan, to be released. And the uh, attorney who I spoke with, Amanda Mendenhall, said that um, uh, the judge asked the federal marshals, said the federal marshals may have something to say about this. And uh, Mumford continued on to say, well, uh, I need to see some paperwork, I need to see a warrant, or they need to go free because you don't have jurisdiction here. Fox News reports that as Bundy brothers remain jailed following attorney's outburst in Oregon courtroom, making it look like it is the attorney's fault, uh, KGW had a little bit more neutral headline. They said uh, Bundy's attorney tackled by U.S. Marshals during heated argument with judge. Ammon Bundy's attorney was tackled by U.S. Marshals during a heated argument with the judge after his client was acquitted on all accounts Thursday afternoon. Here's the clip from the attorney who was tackled uh, by the marshals. So I said, well, if the marshals have something to say about it, let's see what orders they have. Let's see what papers they have that give them authority to take him into to, to custody again. Otherwise, Mr. Bunny's a free man. So I just turned to them and I said, guys, show me show me what, what papers you have. And the next thing I know, they were sur they surrounded me, they took a hold of me, and they were talking about how I was a resisting a, a, a arrest. <laughs> Do you think they acted appropriately? Uh, thank you, that's Marcus. Yeah. Uh, that's now, again, as you just heard, he was simply asking for paperwork before they took him away, which is his right. That, that is what the law is. One of the other attorneys there, part of the team, said his liberty was just assaulted by the very government that was supposed to protect it, by the very government that just prosecuted his client unjustly as found by the jury. Now, when I talked to Amanda Mendenhall, and as I pointed out, she was part of the defense team. She was not there at the time, uh, but the people who were there were talking to her as the courtroom was being uh, taken out. Uh, she said, said that as he was asking for this paperwork from the uh, judge, these federal marshals uh, surrounded him and uh, began to attack him. The judge said, stand down. By that time, they had him on the floor. They twisted his legs, hogtied him essentially so that he couldn't move. And then they took out a taser and tasered him after they had him subdued.
As she pointed out, it felt uh, very retaliatory. And as I said earlier, a reporter in the area said, I've been reporting this kind of stuff for 10 years from the courtroom. I've never seen anything like it. Computers, papers, tables, everything was flying. She said that this is uh, Amanda Mendenhall that I talked to, said this whole thing felt retaliatory. She said there was a very hostile uh, relationship from the uh, government to them from the very beginning. They showed up with vests that said Homeland Security. She said, I don't, I don't mind if they're in police uniforms or wearing black vests or whatever, but to have Homeland Security labels all over the place to step up security the way that they did implied that their clients were terrorists. And they're not terrorists. And as I said before, she said they would have won if they had come after them for criminal trespass. They would not have contested that even. They would have pled guilty to that. But they didn't do that because that's a misdemeanor. They wanted to punish them. They wanted to put them away for a very long time because they challenged the government's authority. It was only after they started to talk to people in the area that the government really came after them. The day that Lavoy Finnegan was killed, was murdered by the government, they were on their way at the invitation of that county sheriff in the next county. Uh, they were on their way to address people and talk to them about their property rights that the government was taking away, that the federal government was gradually taking away. And the property rights are things like grazing rights, timber rights, water rights, mineral rights. Those are property rights just like your home in the suburbs has a property right associated with it. That's the thing that people don't understand. And I think it's very interesting as well. When I talked to her, I asked her about, I said, do you think this is jury nullification? She said, no, that's an excuse that's being used by the prosecutors. Uh, she said they're being overcharged and uh, so they can get a longer sentence and the jury understands that. Now, when you look at the way that the press is reporting this, again, when I look at uh, Fox News talking about this, they say this is a long-running battle over the use of public lands. As I just pointed out, it's not really even public lands. It is private property rights that have been granted that can be sold and traded and have been for centuries on these public lands. And it is your private property rights that they're going to be coming for next you know, there is a lot of ignorance and prejudice surrounding this, a lot of prejudice against these people, saying that they're millionaire ranchers and that sort of thing. One of the reasons there's so much ignorance is because, uh, as we saw last night, Joe Biggs on Facebook posted one of the mainstream media stories on this. And, of course, it's been covered by the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Guardian, Fox News, local newspapers. He posted one of those mainstream media reports on Facebook. Facebook took it down, said this post does not meet our community standards. That's why the ignorance, the prejudice, even the racism we saw Sink Ugar with, young Turks say this is nothing but white privilege that these people got off. No, it's not Sink. You absolutely have no idea what this is about. You have no appreciation of the issues involved. And I guess you'll remain ignorant because Facebook and the media continues to spin and censor the real truth. Now, this is going to continue. Uh, the attorney was released, but now uh, Ryan and Ammon are still in custody. They will be facing trial in Nevada for the original Bundy standoff that was there. And as the uh, Fox News article points out, they say, while the charges in Oregon accused defendants of preventing federal workers from getting to their workplace. The case in Nevada revolves around allegations of a more direct threat with the armed standoff. And I've got to say, I've looked at these documents, and they say that Clive and Bundy threatened federal officers with weapons at the standoff. Clive and Bundy was not at the standoff. Clive and Bundy never carried weapons the whole time I was there, uh, the days preceding it and days after uh, the standoff. It is based on overreach, it is based on lies, and we will have to see what happens with this, but for the time being, there's good news uh, for the Bundys, they have been uh, released, and uh, stay with us, we're going to continue to find out what happened in Oregon, also we will be covering the developments as they happen in Nevada as well. David Knight for InfoWars.com. All right, we got a surprise guest with us in the studio today, the godfather of modern day rockabilly and psychabilly rock. Jim Heath from the Reverend Horton Heath joins us now. Welcome Hello. to the Infowar. Thank you for having us. It was a couple of years ago, Joe Biggs walked into my office and he says, hey, have you ever listened to the Reverend Horton Heat? And I said, my Spotify playlist is full of the Reverend Horton Heat. And he says, you're a big fan of Infowars. How did you find out about Alex Jones and how were you introduced to Infowars? Well, I, I kind of the back door, I, uh, I, the Alex, I, I was I was listening to a Porter Stansberry thing, and Alex was a guest of his, 
and was saying all this stuff, and, you know, it was kind of like, you know, really, all that's real? You know, and so I, I got to tune into this guy, and so I, I tuned in, and I guess that was about four years ago, four or five years ago, mm -hmm. and I got hooked immediately, you know, so... Uh, you know, besides the great inf information that Alex puts out there, he's a very entertaining person. So, uh, you know, I mean, even if, even if even if you're uh, somebody from the left spectrum of political thought, I think that he could still be quite entertaining to those people. He too. is. I think so. a lot of people that don't even like him listen to him. You know, and, and yeah. obviously he's he's getting more popular, and and we're. We're all over the place right now, you know. Na not only nationwide, but Infowars is now worldwide the number one alternative media outlet, arguably in in the world. And That's Alex, great. Alex told me something interesting one time. He goes, Darren, sometimes I listen to my own show, and it sounds like the most informative, entertaining, provocative show he's ever heard in his life. And other days, it sounds like two monkeys doing you know what to a football. <laughs> <laughs> Boo, bitch. Get, get out, out the, the way. way! Get out the way, bitch! Get out the way! Now, one of the big things in the news lately is the rigging of the polls, okay, and also election fraud. And the left seems like it's it's totally undermining our Constitution and our whole democratic process by simply saying that there could be election fraud. We know there's election fraud. There's always been election fraud. And as far as the polling. Those have to be rigged, too, because you go in any town USA, Donald Trump is by far the more popular candidate. Hillary Clinton is lucky if she gets two or 300 people at her frickin' rallies. Donald Trump is like you. He's like a rock star, right? So he's get, he gets thousands of people, very enthusiastic voters that show up all the time, yet he's way behind in the polls. What's that all about? But I want the cameras to span the room. Go ahead, fellas, watch. They don't turn them. They don't turn them. They don't turn them. Go ahead, turn them. Look, turn the camera, go ahead. Turn the camera, ma'am. Turn the camera, you with the blonde hair. Turn the camera, show the room. Go ahead. They don't turn them. Why about, hey, you in the center, why don't you turn your camera? Show them how many people come to these rallies. Turn them, go ahead, turn them. Go ahead. Well, they rigged the polls, and you know I, I've heard that they did the same thing with Ronald Reagan. Uh, that that they and they they couldn't believe that he won by such a big margin because the polls had him losing. Wow, I didn't know that. All right. So the polls. I know that Brexit was supposed to lose as well, and that yeah. was down by ten points the day of the vote. Right. And then right. it it won overwhelmingly. I don't know. You know, I think that the I think they want the polls to be skewed to 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 bear out that they're the winners. And I don't see that that's that great a strategy, you know? So, you know, oh, look, Hillary's gonna win. Okay, go Hillary, you know? And, you know, I think that, I don't see why it hurts them to rig the polls. I mean, helps them, because mm -hmm. it just, it, it, it's meaningless. Well, I think what know? they want to do is they want, you know, I just said how Donald Trump supporters are enthusiastic. Yeah. That's what they're trying to stop. So even Fox News had a poll that said Trump supporters are less likely enthusiastic now because of the polls that show how far he is behind. See, so that way they'll stay home. It's like, look, we're not even. It's gonna done, win. right? I'm they're just they're, stay they're home. trying to demoralize vote, demoralize people, and you know that's. <laughs> I don't see how that's really that smart of a strategy. They, you know, but. Uh, but yeah, I think in this particular election, I think that there's a lot of people that because of because of the way the bullying tactics, I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that are afraid to put a Trump well, sticker on their car, well, and afraid to wear. You know, I'm one of them. I'm one of them because you too. know what? I've got a nice truck. I love my truck, and if I put a Trump bumper sticker on there and I go to the movies, it's going to get keyed. It's going to get egged. My tires will get slashed, and and we've seen it happen all across the country. So I mean, yeah. chances are that's what's going to happen. All right, one last question. What does America look like with Hillary Clinton as president? I think we're going to lose more of our freedoms, and that's my key. You know, I, I don't. I'm for freedom, and and I and when you start saying we're going to raise taxes on the middle class, then you're 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 going to you're that's people's freedom you're infringing upon when you do that, mm -hmm. and. 
I think this, the, 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 the main thing that's in swing here, one of the big, is the Supreme Court justices. Absolutely. You yeah. know, she's going to, you know, whoever gets in is going to have a chance to really stack it because a lot of those people are going to go away. Ruth Bader Ginsburg's getting older, or like all of them are. But uh, I, I, I really, th I'm, I'm afraid that once she gets in there, that that globalist agenda is going to come in and it's it's going to be tough you know but but listen change to change a little bit one thing about this election whoever gets elected is going to have to deal with a major financial crisis uh, well. and one of the crazy things in my belief is socialism and that policy well Trump could get in and they'll just blame him. You know, Ron Paul could get elected the president and they'll Trump, just say, well, this is, him, this is he, because of you, Ron Paul. But you I, know? this is where I think that I, I absolutely agree with you. But I also think that Trump is going to tell everybody what's going on. Says, Look, this is what I'm trying to do and this is what they're doing and they're trying yeah. to blame me for it and, yeah. and people will listen. So he's really shedding light on this whole establishment and this whole new world order system. Yeah. I think he gets in there, we give him a chance, like you said, we hold his feet to the fire. We know what we're getting from Hillary Clinton. We already know what to expect. She has an entire lifetime of corruption and she's. Uh, this would be the most corrupt administration probably in American history if she were to get in. I call this election the weekend at Bernie's election. <laughs> this weekend at Bernie. <laughs> you know, you got, I even had a candidate named Bernie, you know, <laughs> weekend at Bernie's because there, it's like socialism is being propped up like it's still alive. Like here's Bernie, here's his house. He's still alive, you know, and it's failing. It's failing, you know, the Johnson's war on uh, poverty. Is an abysmal failure created more poor people. That's to keep than, everyone on the plantation. Yeah, it's the Democratic. Well, I never, I never really realized a lot of that until I started finding these. Inter you know, the internet's been a great thing, and that's a whole other issue. Them mm -hmm. trying to shut it down, but you know, three, freedom of of information and freedom of thought. It's it's a beautiful thing, and it it really. Uh, it it you know it, it forces people to think, and I think that the old network thing, you know, three network TV network deal, mm -hmm. it, it kind of got people into this thing where they didn't have to think, oh, well, Walter Cronkite said we need a one world government. So that's what we need. When he's like a father figure that was on our televisions for many, many years. Yeah, and yeah. now we know that with media consolidation, that there's only six corporations that pretty much control everything we read, everything we listen to, everything we watch on television. Six corporations. Well, the big election news today is that the FBI has said they are going to be reopening the investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails, citing recent developments. Uh, some officials saying that these emails are numbering up into the thousands. Now, obviously, we don't know what type of information is contained in these emails, but this really isn't the greatest October surprise uh, for Hillary Clinton about 10 days out from the election. Margaret Howell and Owen Schroyer join me now. So what are you seeing the media reporting? I saw Hillary Clinton was kind of uh, responding to these accusations and demanding they release them. Well, it's almost a November surprise with uh, how late this came in the election cycle. And Hillary was campaigning for day uh, today in Iowa, and she didn't mention this at all during her speeches in Iowa. Shocking, somehow she didn't know she claims that she was campaigning. She had no idea what was going on. Then she lied again and said that she couldn't check the news on the airplane because it didn't have Wi-Fi. There's a nice little Wi-Fi logo right there on the door of the airplane. Sorry, Hillary, we caught you <laughs> red-handed. <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting because, you know, during this entire time, she's been trying to tell her supporters and the public and everyone who would listen that she was never under an F FBI investigation. There was no active investigation going. They only spoke to me one time. So it's going to be interesting to see how they try and spin this now. You know, we've covered here at InfoWars basically every day, in case you've missed it. The Clinton email scandal, it looks like it's cut up with her. My question is, though, you know, Wiener, the, the FBI was investigating him for months, and this originated from a BlackBerry that Anthony Wiener was using, supposedly to text nude pics to a minor. And they were monitoring it, and they noticed that Huma Abedin, uh, Clinton's assistant, was actually using it. And that's where this originated from. But my question is, you know, they've been sitting on this for months. What's underneath it? There seems to be something underhanded. I wouldn't be surprised if this is coming out of the Obama administration to do something um, very seedy and sinister here because this is information that they would have already had for the past 11 months. He's been under investigation. You don't just suddenly discover this kind of stuff 
10 days before an election. There seems to be a bigger plot line going on here, and I don't want us to miss it, but yes, we all know she's a criminal. Of course she's a criminal. The woman's going down. To hear Carl Bernstein today, actually, you know, one of Clinton's most famous supporters say, you know what, this is a bombshell. It's, it's potentially fatal. No kidding, sir, but the, the bigger plot line for me here is what's going on behind the scenes, and is this right. an attempt for the president to stay in power? See, I think that there is something behind the scenes, but I don't think it's that. I think what we're seeing here is this is one of two things. Either this is a smoke screen from the FBI where they're going to try to divert and distract. They're going to puff up all the smoke, Hillary Clinton email scandal again, when they know, just like they did before, there's not going to be any indictment. They're not going to find anything in this investigation. Mm -hmm. And when the smoke clears, Hillary Clinton will walk scout free. But all of a sudden, magically, WikiLeaks will be discredited. Mm -hmm. That's what I think this might be. Or on the other hand, what we're seeing is Donald Trump is already the president of the United States. The FBI has realized it. James Comey has realized it. So he's sitting here saying, OK, if Trump's going to be president and I want a job on the other side of this election, I better actually do something about this email scandal. I better actually investigate Hillary Clinton because Trump's going to be president. And if I'm not doing my job, right. I'm not going to have one. He knows that his neck is on the line. We've covered this. Alex covered the McCabe scandal where the deputy director of the FBI, Terry McAuliffe, who's been in Clinton's pocket for a very long time, gave the substantial amount of money to the wife of an FBI director, you know, very suspiciously within two months of her investigation. And the buy-off wasn't successful. And we've, we've covered this. We've uncovered these stories. And I'm with you on that. I, in my opinion, Trump will become president. We, we look at these polls. There's just no way this isn't happening. But the larger plot line, there's something else going on here that the mainstream media just isn't covering. And it's up to us to get to the bottom line of this. We've been doing this all day long. And the best that I've got right now is that there is a larger plot line. And in my yeah. opinion, it's the administration. But it, it, it could also be Comey trying to cover his own tail in the event that he's also taken down with Clinton. Or discredit WikiLeaks. Right. And I mean, just the level of corruption within this administration is just, it's insane to me. Um, you know, we saw, saw today the Attorney General Loretta Lynch pled the fifth, essentially, because she didn't want to respond about those Iran ransom payments. This is basically our top uh, law enforcement official in our country <sighs> pleading the fifth because she doesn't want to indict herself. But then also we, we now see here with Cheryl Mills, uh, this is the chief of staff using a personal email for State Department business. Numerous. So all, yes, numerous personal devices. So they're all guilty of this. No wonder they're trying to get Hillary Clinton off. Because mm -hmm. imagine all of the other people that could be taken down with her for doing this exact same thing. And even the people, as we were learning from WikiLeaks, within her campaign are saying, why the heck would they do this? Obviously, they were trying to get away with something. So mm -hmm. it, in their inner circle, they're saying exactly what we all know out here. Mm -hmm. But the FBI and others are trying to make this seem like there's no big deal, not, no, no fire here. Well, and think about this. You mentioned the corruption in this administration. How did they allegedly find these new emails investigating a former Democratic congressman <laughs> who's apparently sexting a 15-year-old girl? I mean, this, these are the people we're dealing with. I right. seriously, isn't that ironic, though, that this centers around another sex scandal for the Democrats? It's like, <laughs> how many do we have to go through? I mean, thinking about Anthony Weiner and sexy new pics, it makes you want to vomit in your mouth. Poor FBI agent who had to look at those uh, text messages. First of all, my hat's off to you, whomever you are. But the bottom line is that there is a criminal indictable offense here. We've always known that. We've always known this woman belongs in prison for so many reasons. This is like one of a billion, frankly. But they're sharing their device. Mm -hmm. So this, I mean, this is Huma Abedin and her husband, which, I mean, crazy wow. that you're sexting a 15-year-old with the phone that you share with your wife Ooh. who's working with yeah, Hillary so, Clinton. So totally what does that crazy. Say? But yeah, exactly. Here you have Huma Abedin sharing this phone that she's mm -hmm. using to speak with her boss, like one of the top diplomats in our country. But how about this, though? <laughs> and so they're investigating this again, right? They're going to reopen into Hillary Clinton again. And they're talking about, you know, national security maybe at stake here. Well, wait a second. Hillary Clinton is the one using a private server with classified documents. If national security was the issue before, why wasn't something done? Why was there no indictment before? Why all of a sudden is it an issue? So I don't know. We don't know what they found. But here's, here's another interesting question. I'd like to hear what you guys think about this. So the FBI is now going to, I suppose, look back into the Clinton email scandal. 
I guess they're actually being forced to address what WikiLeaks is doing, mm. but still nothing on Project Veritas? Seriously. I can't get anything on the FBI investigating if, into Project Veritas and the videos that they captured? If this doesn't destroy your faith in the FBI, you know, we thought they were inept and corrupt based on how they handled Hillary Clinton. The only thing James Comey can do is send a letter to the Senate Judiciary Committee saying we're, we've reopened an investigation. Get with the times here, sir. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing to me. It makes me sick. But at the same time, you know, this is good news. We, we don't need yeah. to forget this, that they are actually in Unless it's a ploy for Obama to actually sort of maintain his position. That would be the only way this wouldn't be very good news. Absolutely. People are calling to drain the swamp. And we really, truly do need to. Kind of going back to Project Veritas, I feel like a lot of those uh, people who were victims of those violent protesters might have a case here now that we've seen that it was re revealed that they were actually shipped in with that purpose bust in to get violent, to provoke people, knowing that they would flip, knowing that bad things, that was the intention, to draw blood. But still nothing from the FBI on that, and this is a violent matter we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And to go back to what you said a second ago, Margaret, how this is good news, Donald Trump was speaking today, and I think based on his New speech, Hampshire. based on his speech, I think he agrees with you. Mm -hmm. This was the first time I ever heard him kind of you know, talking about the FBI investigation as job, a positive, probably. right? It was the first time I've ever heard him say that. He looked like, oh, wow, maybe the FBI is actually um, finding some integrity again. So that's how Donald Trump at least appeared to feel about it when he was speaking today. But isn't it amazing how there is, there's scandal after scandal with actual legitimate layers of corruption that for whatever reason they continue to sweep away with Hillary Clinton. And then the only thing that they can pull out with Donald Trump are these... You know, Saul Alinsky allegations of just hitting, attacking people with things that they now have to defend that probably aren't even true, but it doesn't matter because where there's smoke, there's fire. That's how most people feel. It's just, it's crazy to me the level of corruption that we are being asked to overlook mm -hmm. and elect this woman. They don't want you listening to this to be able to, they're, they're saying that you're not intellectual enough to understand it. You are, this is very simple stuff. This woman violated the federal law. What she did was a felony repeatedly for about 18 months solid. Everybody knows that at the FBI. Everybody that's helped her, aided her, and abetted her knows that. And now is the day of reckoning, finally, with an inquiry, it looks like. But the, the underlying uh, you know, motivation behind it isn't clear yet, but it will be soon. We're going to bring this to, to you guys as soon as we have it, for it sure. Did, it did feel like today was a big hit to the Clinton campaign. I don't know yeah. why, but it really felt that way to me. Yeah, I, I was kind of, of changes in the air. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. And thank you all for tuning into the show tonight. We will see you here again Monday, Halloween.